Today we're going to talk about obesity. Obesity is a complex chronic disease with several causes that lead to excessive body fat and sometimes poor health. But before we continue, if you appreciate all the information and the research that goes into making a video like this, it does help out tremendously if you hit the like button or hit subscribe. Thank you and let's begin. Body fat itself is not a disease, of course. But when your body has too much extra fat, it can change the way it functions. These changes are progressive, can worsen over time, and they can lead to adverse health effects. The good news is that you can improve your health risks by losing some of your excess body fat. Even small changes in weight can have a big impact on your health. Not every weight loss method works for everyone. Most people have tried to lose weight more than once, and keeping the weight off is just as important as losing it in the first place. Is obesity defined by your weight? Healthcare providers commonly use the body mass index, BMI, to define obesity in the general population. The BMI measures average body weight against average body height. As a generalization, healthcare providers associate a BMI of 30 or higher with obesity. Although BMI has its limitations, it's an easily measurable indicator and can help alert you to obesity-related health risks. It's also possible to have obesity at a normal weight. If your body weight is average but your body fat percentage is high, you may have the same health risks as somebody with a higher BMI. Healthcare providers have also observed ethnic differences in how much extra weight different people can carry before it affects their health. For example, people of Asian descent are more likely to have health risks at a lower BMI, and black people are more likely to have health risks at a higher BMI. Another way of assessing obesity is by measuring waist circumference. If you have more body fat around your waist, you are statistically more at risk of obesity-related diseases. The risk becomes significant when your waist size is more than 35 inches for people assigned female at birth or 40 inches for people assigned male at birth. What are the three types of obesity? Healthcare providers classify obesity into class types based on how severe it is. They use BMI to do it. If your BMI is between 25.0 and 29.9 kilograms per square meter, they put you in the overweight category. There are three general classes of obesity that healthcare providers use to evaluate what treatments may work best for each person. Morbid obesity is an outdated term for class three obesity. In medical language, morbidity means associated health risks. Doctors referred to class three obesity as morbid because it was most likely to come with related health problems. However, they retired the term because of its negative connotations. How is childhood obesity assessed? Healthcare providers also use BMI to calculate obesity in children, but they calculate it relative to the child's age and assigned sex. A child older than two years may be diagnosed with obesity if their BMI is greater than 95% of their peers in the same category. Different growth charts may present slightly different BMI averages based on the population they are sampling. How common is obesity? Obesity in American adults was last surveyed in 2017 to 2018. The prevalence was 42.5%, up from 30.5% in 1999 to 2000. In that same period, the prevalence of class 3 obesity almost doubled from 4.7% to 9.2%. Childhood obesity in America from 2017 to 2018 was 19.3%. Worldwide, obesity has nearly tripled in the last 50 years. The rise has been especially dramatic in lower-income countries where malnutrition is common. These communities now have greater access to higher calorie foods with low nutritional value. Obesity now commonly coexists with undernutrition in these countries. How does obesity affect my body? Obesity affects your body in many ways. Some are simply the mechanical effects of having more body fat. For example, you can draw a clear line between extra weight on your body and extra pressure on your skeleton and joints. Other effects are more subtle such as chemical changes in your blood that increase your risk for diabetes, heart disease, and stroke. Some effects are still not well understood. For example, there is an increased risk of certain cancers with obesity. We don't know why, but it exists. Statistically, obesity increases your risk of premature death from all causes. By the same token, studies show that you can significantly improve these risks by losing even a small amount of weight, 5% to 10%. Metabolic changes. Chronic inflammation has many adverse health effects. 
One way that it affects your metabolism is by contributing to insulin resistance. This means your body can no longer use insulin to efficiently lower blood glucose and blood lipid levels, sugars and fats in your blood. High blood sugar and blood lipids, cholesterol and triglycerides, also contribute to high blood pressure. Together, these combined risk factors are known as metabolic syndrome. They are grouped together because they all tend to reinforce each other. They also reinforce further weight gain and make it harder to lose weight and sustain weight loss. Metabolic syndrome is a common factor in obesity and contributes to many related diseases, including type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, fatty liver disease, kidney disease, and gallstones. How is obesity treated? Your complete health profile will determine your individual treatment plan. Your healthcare provider will target your most urgent health concerns first, then follow up with a longer-term weight loss plan. Sometimes there may be quick changes they can recommend for an immediate impact, like switching your medications. The overall treatment plan will be more gradual and probably involve many factors. Your treatment plan may include dietary changes. The dietary changes you personally need to make to lose weight will be individual to you. Some people may benefit from cutting portion sizes or snacks between meals. For others, it may be more about changing what they eat than how much. Almost everyone can benefit from eating more plants. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains and legumes tend to be lower in fat and higher in fiber and micronutrients. They are more nutritious and can make you feel fuller and more satisfied after eating fewer calories. Increased activity. Everyone has heard that diet and exercise are both important for weight loss and weight maintenance. But exercise doesn't have to mean a gym membership. Just walking at a moderate pace is one of the most efficient types of exercise for weight loss. Just 30 minutes, five days a week, is what healthcare providers suggest. A daily walk at lunchtime or before or after work can make a real difference. Behavioral therapies, counseling, support groups, and methods such as cognitive behavioral therapy may have a role to play in supporting your weight loss journey. These methods can help rewire your brain to support positive changes. They can also help you manage stress and address emotional and psychological factors that may be working against you. Weight and weight loss efforts affect us on many levels, so it can be helpful to have support on the human side as well as on the practical side. Medication. Your healthcare provider may recommend medications to use in conjunction with other treatments. Medications aren't the whole answer to weight loss, but they can help tackle it from another angle. For example, appetite suppressants can intercept some of the pathways to your brain that affect your hunger. For some people, this might be a small piece of the puzzle, but for others, it might be a bigger one. In conclusion, it is important to address the issue of obesity as it has significant implications for both individuals and society as a whole, including increased healthcare costs, decreased quality of life, and reduced productivity. Obesity prevention and management should be a public health priority, with efforts aimed at promoting healthy behaviors and reducing barriers to healthy choices.